Hey Dan, how are you? It's good to see Hi. you again, albeit digitally. Good to see you, Sophia. Yeah. Um, no, thank you for joining us. How are you at the moment? Pretty good. Doing well. Getting, getting kind of hot and sunny here. I had to close the window shade so my screen here wouldn't get all messed up. But uh, oh, I wish, I wish we had that here. <laughs> well, actually, we've had some nice weather, but it's, uh, it's uh, tailing off a little bit. But it's, it's nice to hear things are uh, going well. And you'll be joining me for the big indie pitch later in the week as well. So. You yeah, know, we'll, yeah, we'll get some time to see that. But in the meantime, you're here to share your expertise with the audience, aren't you? Yes, yeah. Well, yeah, thank you for joining us. I mean, I'm interested to see this as well, especially because obviously, you know, we've spent a lot of time in the pitches and hanging out at the after parties and everything. But uh, yeah, I'll let you get away with it. Get, get on with it. The time is perfect. So uh, I'll leave you to it. I'll be here, though, and I'll be back at the end to do some questions and answer. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. We'll get started here. So as long as everyone can see my screen there. So I, I, I just kind of wanted to share some insights uh, to some of the other indies out there and, you know, how to, how do, how do you kind of use advertising in your game or how do you, how do you grow your games through um, the use of, um, you know, commercial means or advertising? So, you know, the, the purpose of this is really, you know, a lot of indie games, you know, you'll have games and things like that and you'll want to monetize. And, um, you know, it's not always so easy to raise, you know, money to continue building games or things like that. So these are kind of ways that you can, um, you know, look at partnering with other companies that are looking to advertise through games. So um, just a little kind of background on, you know, opportunities in game ads and branding. So, you know, years ago, uh, you know, we saw some of the early, um, some of the early advertising options where you saw, you know, console games that had billboards, you know, racing games that had all kinds of ads on the billboards and the stadiums and things like that. Um, so those, those were kind of, uh, you know, some of the, some of the big commercial pushes of, you know, putting advertising into games and, uh, and they meshed pretty well, you know, they weren't sort of distracting in any way. They were a part of the game. You're used to seeing a billboard at a racetrack or a ball field or things like that. And so, you know, they were pretty well accepted too, as part of the game and part of the uh, game experience. I think earlier, I think I saw a presentation by Bidstack where they were actually able to put these into, you know, into some of the, mobile games or, or other types of games now um, using their SDK, which is sort of, you know, kind of in that tradition, right? And in, in, in a tradition that follows well without kind of ruining the content of your game and still putting advertising and making some extra revenue in it. So, you know, the, the trick really is, you know, how do you bring advertising revenue into your game without ruining your game, right? You don't, you don't want to ruin your game by having too many ads. Um, you don't necessarily want intrusive ads in your game. So you want to partner um, with a potential brand that can really um, use, use your game without kind of changing the content too much or without ruining the content. Um, so, you know, early to early on, you used to see things like uh, promotional web games. One of the games I did uh, worked with another company that was doing sort of race uh, games on the web. This is back in the early um, 2000 or actually late nineties. Um, where we did like a Subaru race game. So it was an ideal rally, uh, you know, it was like a rally sport game that was on the web and had several different tracks. So, you know, you saw a lot of things too with Flash back then, right? A lot of people would brand through Flash or put promotional games um, on the web. Uh, not nearly as, as powerful as what we have today. You know, we've just seen such a huge leap forward in, um, in games, you know, in the interest in games and the quality of games now that, you know, now we're seeing a bigger space as far as advertising. You know, they said, um, I saw a talk from Google uh, about a month or two ago, and they were saying there was something like trillions of hours of game time played, which means this is the most viewed media um, out there. And so with the most viewed media, obviously, you know, the eyeballs are all there and there should be a lot of potential for advertising to want to get involved in that and, and a lot of potential for any license holders or game creators that that can potentially grow their revenue with uh, with ads. Um, so some of the other types of things, you know, we, we've seen most of you are familiar with in game advertising, right? So there's a bunch of SDKs that you can do that. Um, and so some, 
you know, some can be implemented better than others. You know, when there's, when there's too many of the ads every time and you want to get a reward or get past something or, or when the ads are forced on us, we're not too happy with it. But when we're, we're okay sometimes with uh, a lot of players are okay with rewards if they're not too frequent, you know, rewarded advertising. Um, but, you know, the rewarded advertising is the best one because they can just skip by it, right, and go go right to their game if they want to buy in-app versus um, buy, versus watch rewarded ads. Uh, so, you know, where's the potential in, um, in making money with brands? So uh, theme game reskins. So uh, I'll show you some examples of that where uh, some – some brand, some game developers have kind of either reskin games or done a whole game that entirely uses utilizes a brand. So that's another thing that you can use if you're an indie studio and you have a really a competent team and you want to add some revenue. You can totally um, you can totally make use of that. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so you know the ad network SDKs are the ones you know that probably most of you're familiar with. I mean, obviously, as game creators, we don't necessarily want to have to sell individual ads, so those are those are a good way to add into your games, um, but not a great way to target. A lot of the ad networks um, will sort of show random ads that are unfamiliar with your game. So do a little bit of research and make sure that, you know, the ad networks and, and, and even do some follow up and testing your game, make sure that the ads in the games are relevant. Um, there are some that will target users, you know, at Facebook ads obviously does that they do a lot of tracking and things like that. And that could also be a bad thing, you know, if a player feels like they're being watched too much or their web activity is being watched too much where the ads are totally targeted to the last thing they search. So, you know, you kind of have to balance that and really figure out, you know, what, what you want to do, what's, what's the, uh, you know, what's the, um, really the, the impression you want to get, give with your game. Um, product placement is another one. Um, you know, we don't see a whole lot of product placement in games and I haven't seen a whole lot of, um, really push for that, you know, in product placement. So that's something that really is up to, the developer, I think that's an open market where the developer can really um, open up some channels and do some product placement if it makes sense in the game, right? Um, and then also there's surveys. Surveys is another way that there's uh, some survey companies out there that have SDK plugins and, you know, those, those have much higher potential for earning, but of course they do take away, take the player out of the game experience for a little while to answer questions. But um, again, it, you know, it depends on how much game time you're willing to give up versus how much revenue. Um, so I wanted to show you some uh, examples here of, you know, really the the branding of what companies are doing and, um, you know, how agencies are taking advantage of the game market now, bringing it into, you know, the commercial realm, because obviously the eyes are there. Um, and, you know, some stuff is like really off the wall and but it really does you know what uh, kfc did with the uh, i love you colonel sanders games this is not even like you know it's not even like they directed it at mobile users they directed it at steam users in particular so i think they really wanted a younger audience um to continue going to kfc it's not a game where it's you know it's like okay you're you know we're promoting kfc you're not selling fried chicken or anything like that you're really part of a game at a cooking school and you're part of a story right so it's it's uh it's kind of an interesting twist on it because it has a lot of anime characters in it it has a very uh uh fun style to it it really does lend itself well to uh to the community of gamers um, and still is is fun, you know, it, it's one of those things like it, it's not like an intrusive ad thing like, hey, we're promoting KFC. It's actually using the brand to really um, to really make the game experience um, embrace the brand rather than forcing ads on people. Um, and then, you know, you have uh, the Hard Rock Cafe is an interesting brand too, which is one of the ones we're potentially working with the masquerade. So, you, you know, the Hard Rock casinos are a very large property worldwide. And um, we've been looking at them particularly, uh, not so much for the casino aspect, but for the fact that they are really looking at free to play games now. So I think they just did this uh, Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, you know, it's like a diner type game. So those are really popular right now, right? The the, the management game. So the company they had worked with had a, had a similar game and did some reskin 
or the hard rock. And so, you know, there, there's potential in, in light reskins versus heavy reskins. And it really depends on, you know, how much, you know, really how much your development team can devote time into doing reskins or, you know, how much of a budget you really have for potentially getting more player reach. But if you think about the hard rock cafe, you know, you think about them as a casino owner, right? So they have hotels, they have the cafes and then they have the casinos. And so they have a whole bunch of, online casino games but the interesting thing that they did was a departure from the casino games is that they also did free-to-play fun games you know both um you, you know both of the casual and and sort of management style games so it's really i like the companies that are taking that leap forward and and really taking the next step and not just sort of sitting in their comfort zone and saying oh well this has worked in the past so we'll keep doing that so you want to keep your eye out for those companies that are really um, that want to do, you know, that want to take those risks and, and that understand the potential of how many really, you know, how many users are there are of games and how, how many more, how much more time players play on a, on a computer versus watching video, right? And so, you know, a lot of people, they'll just skip the ads, right? If they're watching YouTube or something and there's an ad, a lot of them will just look away or skip it, but, um, or they'll have ad blockers, which you can't really do in apps, right? Um, so, you know, that that's one of the potential things uh, that, that makes a game more popular. And then, you know, then there's, you know, one of the things uh, they look at, you know, is it a potential good brand match? So, like, with our games in particular, you know, we looked at, you know, the demographics to the Hard Rock Cafe. Now, they've been working with an, a number of other companies. iLion is one of them. So that had a bubble shooter game, and they had reskinned um, that bubble shooter game a very light reskin really that just had some music and and a few other elements in it that was a, a little bit different from their other game so um you know the other potentials are besides reskinning because reskinning can be a pretty heavy uh workload on on your your team um so unless the potential is there to really reach more players which you can with a brand you can reach a lot more players if, if you're promoted through a brand or a portal or things like that. So it's a potential way to reach a lot more players, um, but it is, a, of course, a commitment um, in in really putting that team together and trying to get uh, more people on board with, uh, you know, investing time into um, reskinning a game or customizing the game for that potential market. Um, so some of the the easier things to do. I mean, we talked about in-game rewards and rewarded video, but some of the other things you you know you could do is you could tap into some some types of companies will have a rewards plan uh, a re rewards plan or loyalty uh, coupon redemption. So if you can tap into those things into your game too, you can also have some added revenue if if it's possible if the developer or if the the license holder is willing to kind of unlock those potential things for you because you know really loyalty programs are really important for certain types of venues and certain types of brands um, and then the other thing is do you know turning games into training software so if you have a potential game that has a specific mechanic and it can be really easily turned into a training software things like that that's a whole other it's a whole other thing and you know a lot of game developers you know we're really kind of uh, dedicated to our craft or really dedicated to our art and and you know and our audience and things like that so you know it, you know, it's only if it makes sense right if it's an easy thing to do to take this game mechanic that you have and turn it into something to you be using for training you know there's so many markets for that and even government agencies that can utilize that whether it's you know flight training or you know safety or a bunch of different things that i've gotten in, involved in as well um, there's there's a whole lot of potential there um, so, you know, this is kind of just an example of, you know, proposing games as reskinning. So this is so, one of the things we looked at, like, you know, for the, our game Romantasia, you know, we had sort of a medieval, um, romance game, and then we looked at it to do more of a battle of the band style game. So it was a really a similar kind of, um, it's really the similar game in a lot of ways, pretty much identical game. But we're really just changing look from you know some sort of this medieval romance to this this rock and roll battle of the band style game and really the items you know the items change but the values are pretty similar so we're not really doing a whole lot of changing game design as far as playability 
but we're investing a lot of time in game assets, right? So that's another potential thing that you have to kind of consider. Um, so what types of products are good uh, for reskinning or branding? So, you know, there, there's a lot of different potential in there for, you know, your game products or gamification. You know, if agencies or things like that are looking for gamification for brands, there's, there's potential for that. And when I think of gamification, I'm, you know, I'm not thinking of incredibly complicated things, but, um, but, you know, if you, if you have really small games and HTML5, those are the ideal things for gamification because you can really easily change, um, you know, you can change the, the, the visuals rather simply, and you can also add in a lot of um, little things like, you know, a lot of companies will use like a spinning wheel or, you know, the typical wheel of fortune or things like that to generate promotion. So those, there's a lot of potential, I think the most potential in HTML5 as far as, you know, game rewards. Um, whereas, you know, on the video side, there's, there's a lot less potential because people will add blo ad blockers and things like that. And they don't really want to be bombarded with ads, but they are willing to play games. So um, if you can turn redeemable coupons or promos and things like that into simple games, uh, you could do that really easily on the web. Um, so the platforms, you know, the platforms, like I said, the HTML5 is a really great one as far as, you know, gamification or simple, small games. If you don't want to really invest a lot of time in building big games for companies, or you can add, um, you can add a lot of value with that. Um, however, you know, the potential in the platforms, as far as, you know, distribution goes, there's, there's less, uh, there's less problems with ad blockers and things like that. So if you do choose to use, say, like uh, an ad platform or an ad network, and you're putting it in an app or in a platform, um, you, you don't have, you know, you don't have that problem with, you know, the advertising, uh, the advertiser losing money because of ad blockers and things like that. So, you know, uh, the, the mobile platforms are really good one for that. Um, web, not so much if you're doing video ads because you can block ads. Um, Steam is another one, you know, we saw uh, not so much with rewarded video, but with theming, you know, there's a whole potential market there for theming. And, um, you know, we're not really sure too much about Google Stadia or things like that. Apple's never been big on in-game advertising, um, especially for subscription, but, um, but you can uh, obviously, you can do it in your own games. Um, and then, you know, there's a big potential market too in VR product marketing. So we've seen like, you know, here's an example of the McDonald's app. Uh, so, you know, fast food is one of those things that's really um, going to be heavily into, you know, the gaming market and VR market and AR market as far as, you know, mixed reality using these things, you know, using something similar to Pokemon Go instead of finding Pokemon Go, you find things at location based um, establishments. And, you know, it's really, it's a really powerful tool for them and potential reach for you for customers too, because you have the global brand in place already. So that is the, the end of my little presentation here. So if anybody has any questions, uh, And I'm back. Hey. So yeah, Hi. really, really great talk. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we've got one question. And as I say to everyone, we've got to, you know, throw your questions in, have a chat. I know we're uh, just about uh, coming up for time in a bit. But uh, yeah, so the first question we've got is because of COVID, uh, well, COVID-10, but I think it's meant to be COVID-19, do yeah. you think in-app spend by brands will increase as it is cheaper and measurable than billboards, etc.? Well, you know, that's hard to say. They're, they're saying that um, right now, I think there was an earlier talk where there was an, an, an analytics on the fact that people were spending less on the advertising, on in-game in or um, in-app advertising. And I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure why. Um, and that could be just maybe they were talking about game, you know, game companies doing less spend on in app advertising. But, um, but you know, really the player space has gone up, but the player space per player is lower. But you know, overall, if there's more players, even if they're spending less, they're going to be or more earning potential, right? So it, it's one of those things where you know we kind of have to wait and see what what the results are. You know, it's hard to predict uh, to say 
really what what the effects of COVID-19 are. Obviously, more people are online, more people are playing games. Um, so if they're spending less that and then and the games have in-app advertising, there should be more earnings from the uh, in-app advertising. Um, but, you know, a lot of a lot of people will be willing to skip ads, of course. And um, and I think, you know, the the bottom line is, you know, you, you, the metrics used to be something like 30 percent of your game revenue could come from in-app advertising. But, you know, that's a variable number, of course. And, you know, we could see that number go up with COVID-19. Yeah. Um, and the next question we've got is, do you expect ad revenue ECPMs to increase? Um, well, you know, the price, what I've noticed is that the price of ads are going up, you know, especially for, you know, for promoting apps, right? So the price of apps have been going up. I don't know that the price of um, advertising within game or the revenues that are going up for the, for the, for the game creators. So, but I mean, potentially more players should mean more revenue, but that doesn't mean that um, the ad networks are being more generous. What, I, what I've noticed is, you know, the, the higher paying networks are going to be the ones that are going to be featuring stuff that is like, you know, the companies that can afford big ads, right? Like you'll, you'll see it on TV too, right? You'll see, uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, you'll see um, a lot of companies that are doing, um, you know, the insurance companies, they have the most money right now, right? We all have to yeah. pay for insurance, at least here in the United States. And so that, that is a company that can afford advertising. So, you know, you will see a lot of those ads, ads in games now. And, you know, so those are going to be the higher paying ones. And, you know, and unfortunately for the advertisers, you know, how many 14 year old kids are going to be wanting to buy insurance? So it's, it's a relevance thing, you know, it's persistence. Yeah. It's, you know, how many ads you think and and this is one of the things when you partner with an ad network you want to consider those things do you want to make a lot of money do you want to have relative relevant ads you know you know do you want to continue the game experience all those things you kind of have to um balance out in your game and make sure you're not ruining the experience of your game at the same time too yeah um <laughs> the, the next one is just a, a Big thank you from Avinash, who's saying the best way to market ad for games for indie studios. So a thank you from them for the talk, which is always really nice. And then um, another question we've got is, uh, do you know about non-intrusive ad formats like uh, palmup.io? Uh, that one, that one I haven't used. No, I haven't, I haven't really had any experience with that uh, one. I suppose though, one thing that came to my mind based on that sort of thing, which when we talk about non-intrusive is, I remember talking to a developer about using things such as uh, audio ads much like um like a radio broadcast so you can continue playing the game without being disrupted do you see a future for uh, an alternate form of in-app advertisement that isn't just what we know now such as you know cutting away from the game to see an advert or anything else like that yeah i think we're just scratching the surface now of um of what the potential of advertising is and i think the the advertising community hasn't really fully realized it yet either and, and i think they will and you know hopefully it won't ruin our games forever <laughs> you know hopefully uh, the developers will figure out a way to be smart enough to to not ruin their games with too many ads but um but yeah and i think there's a lot of you know potential for entrepreneurs there that have a understanding of marketing or or the advertising world to really bring tech into games and really bring potentially, um, you know, meaningful ads into games and relevant ads into games that are at the same time um, enhancing of the games, you know, like like the different things that can help a game rather than hurt it. Yeah. And uh, we've got one more question. So we'll ask this one last one and then I'll let you get on your way. And this is Jordan who asks, who first of all says great talk and then asks, uh, what are your thoughts on direct purchase ad formats where you can buy stuff directly from the ad? Is that even viable? I think it is. I think the, the the problem is is when they make you go to a site to buy things. I think that's that can be rather intrusive and obnoxious, right? So if you're forced yeah. to go buy something and you're in the player and you're taking, you know, anything that takes you out of the player experience can be quite aggravating. So um, I think you you know it, it's again it's it's really like how how well is it done? How well thought out is it done? that, you know, those experiences can be integrated into the game without being, you know, obnoxious or feeling like a, you know, a cash grab. Right? 
Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. No, that's brilliant. So, and no, thank you for being a part of the uh, show as a speaker. Obviously, your your parts are far from done. As obviously, you'll be joining us for the big indie pitch, and I'm sure you've got a load of meetings and everything else like that. And uh, of course, if you have time, you know, drop into the the Discord because I'm sure people might have some extra questions they'd love to ask you in our growth uh, track channel in the sure, Discord. Sure. Great. But yeah. No, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, yeah, I'll um I'll see you later in the week. But you know, for now, uh, thank you so much.